There's a lot of ignorance in the open source community, especially when it's related to the different open source license. For example, very recently, someone had characterized Homebrew as being open source because it runs on a BSD license. Now, I've been coding for about five years now, and I've already had a piece of code stolen from me. And if you do not know about open source and the different license and implications, this can happen to you too. There's a friend of mine who I will name Fred, and Fred works on a project related to music creation. And he's been working on this project for a couple of years now. And he decided to have a BSD license. Well, little did he know this was going to actually have some far reaching implications that I don't think he even expected. Do you like my content? Well, be sure to smash that subscribe button and you could hit the notification bell if you feel so inclined to do so. There's only one open source license, that's the GPL license. And that basically states that all derivatives must be open source. And when you publish your work, it also must remain open source. So it's always going to be open source. That's what that means. Now, there are other licenses that are what I would characterize as semi-open source, and they differ in the following ways. It really doesn't matter if you're talking about the Apache license, the BSD license, the MIT license, they all pretty much work the same way in that the derivatives that you're using do not have to be open source, i.e. libraries and that sort of thing. They don't have to be open source. So you can actually work on projects that are closed source and then like have an open source component to them. Also, you don't have to share your work. So if you have like an open source component and then you add to it, you don't have to share that work. Where with a GPL license, you would literally have to share that work. Developers not understanding the implications when it comes to these different licenses has some disastrous consequences. A good example would be when Red Hat quit making packages for CentOS and other RHEL derivatives. This sent the developer world into a tailspin, and rightfully so. It was very inconvenient for everyone but what was really telling to me is how everyone lost their effing minds. Like they literally went bat doo doo crazy. And it was really funny to see because they obviously didn't understand the implications of the GPL license. Yes, it is true that there are proprietary components of Red Hat Linux. But there have been proprietary components ever since 2002. But the way a lot of these developers and sysadmin developers on YouTube made it sound was like, oh, suddenly they made this project closed source and they made it proprietary. But the idea that the whole project is all of a sudden closed source, well, that's just simply not true. There are tools, if you're a subscriber, that you can use that is closed source. And they just forgot that section where said the end user was the only one that had to have access to the source code. And a whole bunch of people are really miffed about the Red Hat Linux situation. Red Hat Linux is no more proprietary than it was before they decided to do that. So the bottom line is this, okay? The GPL compares to some of these other quasi open source licenses like water and oil. So the one side says, yes, I'm water, you can drink me. But the other side says, well, I'm not exactly water, but I'm a liquid, except you can't drink me. That's the issue. And so this is how these compare with a truly open source license. Now let's go back to Fred and I. We are doing fantastic, okay? So now we both continued this project uh, we've done a whole bunch of work since our code got stolen and we changed the license to GPL license and a bunch of other things. Now, need to backtrack. So this person whom I'll call a poser, he did something kind of interesting. He basically took the beginnings of a project that we had done and then he started working on it himself 
and he made all of those contributions closed source. What he did also in the process was took a patent out against it. And so we couldn't continue on with our project as it was. So we started a new project. We did a bunch of testing to figure out kind of what he was doing. And then we basically set a strategy to do some different things and basically morph our project into something much more than we ever thought it would be. And the fact of the matter is we have received a cease and desist letter about two weeks ago. And of course, we're not going to cease or desist, obviously. But here's the thing here. This all happened because we didn't understand the implications of these licenses and how they work. This would have been under a GPL license. Would he have been able to take our code and do whatever he wanted with it? Yeah. He wouldn't have been able to take out a patent and he wouldn't have been able to use it against us and he wouldn't have been making our lives a living hell. Now we're real developers and like I said, this guy is a real poser and he is a real piece of work. I'm going to tell you, I've actually spoken to the person through email. I'm just going to say there isn't too many people that get under my skin. This person really does get under my skin. At the end of the day, the only person who's to blame is us. We didn't understand the different implications and we paid for it. And that's the only message that I want to relay to you. Don't be like us. Go ahead and stay tuned for the next video.